What's up guys, my name is Liam, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Diru EK75RT. This is one of their first Hall Effect keyboard offerings. It is including their custom switches in it, and they are using their own driver. So how does it stack up against competition, and more importantly, could this be the perfect keyboard for you? Let's check it out. Before we get started today, I did want to let you know that this was sent out to me. However, everything you'll be hearing in this video is going to be my own words and my own opinions. Included inside the box, it does come with a user manual, a USB-C cable, and a keycap puller. For the layout and aesthetic of the board, they are using these transparent keycaps. Not really the biggest fan of the transparent keycaps myself, but for the layout over here on the right hand side, they do have this aluminum filling knob with these teeth on it. So this has been operating fine. For the layout on the right side over here, they do have the delete button in the middle. I kind of wish that they had like the page down, page up, and the delete up here. I'd prefer it a little bit more that way. But other than that, the layout on this is pretty simple and straightforward. Coming up here at the top, you do have an RGB indicator, this clear plastic that does go around the outside, and you do have your connectivity for your USB-C over here on the top left-hand side. Nothing over on the right hand or the left hand side of the board. You do have these four rubberized feet up in each one of the corners. And as you can see, it does have this dual flip out feet design with a rubberized bottom. That gives you a little bit more of a height adjustment. Here it does have a smaller foot as well. And then coming over here at the front, the height of this, I don't feel like it's too high or anything like that. It does have just a little bit of a natural angle once you do it, lay it flatly. So everything about the layout, size, and form factor of this has been working out pretty well for me. Here's a close-up look of the transparent keycaps that are included. The top of these, they do feel a little bit more smooth to the touch, though there is a little bit of a noticeable texture there. For their custom switches, they do have an initial force of around 30 GF and the bottom out is rated around 55 GF. As for the weight and the linear motion of the filling of these switches, they do feel pretty good to game on, but when it comes to the stem wobble, one thing that I have noticed is these switches, they don't have a whole lot of stem wobble, so they do offer a decent sense of stability. The one issue I am running into with these, however, is I do feel like across the board, that these switches have been a little bit more inconsistent for me than some of the other things out there. Now, just to show you an example of what I'm talking about, I did put a Gateron Jade switch on here and it seems to be working fine. So one thing I have kind of noticed with these switches is you do get some of them like this one right here. It is pretty solid and pretty stable, not a whole lot of movement, but just with some other random ones, I've been getting a little bit more movement and you can kind of notice it a lot more obviously here over on the right hand side. So even though you don't get a whole lot of stem wobble from the switches themselves, the way that they're seated in here, some of them feel just a little bit looser than others. Like here is an example right here. I feel like I'm getting a little bit more movement from that. So when I did throw the Gateron Jade switch in here, it is a very obvious noticeable difference this switch seats in here as solid as a rock. In fact, you get like absolutely no movement or wobble on it at all. So these switches are not terrible. I don't feel like they're as solid or offer the same type of stability as something like a Gateron switch. So for the internal design, just so you know, this case was actually a pretty big pain to take apart. I actually had to pry it and pull on it pretty aggressively. It is kind of snapped together with all these different types of clips around the edges, but this is just a completely all plastic frame up here on the top. It did come pre-installed with these silicone spacebar stabilizers, but I am seeing a little bit of lube down here in the stabilizers. So once you do pull this out, you do have a full aluminum tray that the keys themselves sit in, but then over on the bottom, here's a close-up look of the keyboard fully exposed so there is no additional type of foam or anything separating the circuit board from the aluminum switch plate and it didn't come with any type of an additional foam on the back and then sitting over here at the very bottom you just have a piece of silicone it is pretty thick it's thicker at the top and then goes thinner down here 
at the bottom, sitting in the bottom of the plastic tray. So since there's not a whole lot of sound dampening materials on the inside, it is using these lighter transparent filling keycaps. The noise this keyboard is definitely on the louder end. So let's go ahead and drop a sound test. For the software starting over here on the first tab, this is where it allows you to make adjustments to any keys. Here you have a keyboard function, mouse function, and then you can set up macro keys, do switches for your lighting, multimedia, you can disable and also adjust the function keys. I don't see any other additional settings for this if I were to right click or left click on any of these keys. Then coming over here to the next tab, this is where it will allow you to make adjustments in the rapid trigger settings. First off here you have the actuation point down here to the bottom left. It does allow you to make adjustments as low as 0.1 millimeters. After that you can make additional adjustments also in 0.1 millimeters all the way down to four millimeters. Over here for the rapid trigger, they also do have the settings so that you can set up the press and the release on the switch. And as you can see, this also goes as low as 0.1 millimeter. You can make adjustments in 0.1 millimeter all the way up to four millimeters as well for both of them. With the performance of this keyboard, this is the settings I've been using. Everything's been working good without any type of hiccups. And then finally over here on the competitive mode, I didn't get a really chance to mess around with this too much. Much, but when you enable this it does have some basic presets here it is said that this is supposed to make the response of the keyboard faster but the one thing that was a little bit confusing to me here is that it does have these additional presets already set up for you so again I'm not sure if I'm doing something incorrect here but if I were to left click or right click on any of these keys nothing has given me the option to make any type of adjustments so that is a bummer if this does in fact reduce the latency of the keyboard it'd be cool if they at least give you the option where you can set up your own profiles or at least come in here and modify the ones that are given to you then over here you do have an advanced key or key binding test settings that you can do LED options, pretty standard and straightforward. It does allow you to individually control the side light and the backlighting on the keyboard. And then finally down here is where you have an overall macro manager. For the performance, I did put this head to head with the Wooting 60 AG on my solenoid rig with a high speed camera. And a really quick disclaimer I wanna put out there for these test results is there's a bunch of different varying factors that can alter the results of this test. So with that being said, we're just doing this to test it out to try and get a general idea on where this sits. This was actually doing a pretty decent job at holding its own against the Wooting 60HE in terms of the press latency. I ran this test on both boards 10 times and it did come out tying the Wooting on the press five out of times it actually did come ahead. The one thing, however, where the Wooting very clearly pulls ahead is on the release latency. Out of the 10 times I've tested both of these boards, the Wooting did clearly win all 10 times. All right guys, so that about wraps things up on the Deru EK75RT. And just kind of break things down for you simply, this is just kind of a budget style gaming keyboard and it just all around kind of feels like that. So though I do feel like this is headed in the right direction for their first offering, there has been a lot of competition out there, especially in this price point that does have more features, has a little bit better of a premium feeling, and even has a bit better of gaming performance. So if you guys have any questions or feel like I left anything out, please let me know down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed watching this video and are interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel. And thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.